Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Altmetric for the Communications Office. Um, if you could do me a huge favor and just let me know in chat if you can hear me and if you can see my screen, that would be great. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I just wanted to start by taking a few minutes to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Heidi Becker. I work for digital science as a product specialist for Altmetric and Dimensions. Uh, I have a very varied background. Uh, in my past, I've worked in a um, state government press office as well as a funding agency for research. Oops. And I'm also new to webinars, so uh, I appreciate your patience as I advance these slides. Uh, so a brief agenda, a look at what we're going to be talking about. I'm going to quickly review uh, both Altmetrics generally and Altmetric uh, as a company and a service. And then I'm going to get into the meat of the matter, start talking about how to get a picture of the attention landscape to your research, how to zoom in, uh, pinpoint sources and peaks of attention, um, and how to use those to your advantage, obviously, in amplifying your research, uh, tracking and analyzing attention to your individual researchers, and also um, kind of evaluating your efforts as a communications department. So generally speaking, what are alternative metrics? These are indicators that demonstrate attention to products of the research life cycle. So these could be most commonly journal articles, but they could also include data sets. Um, I'll get into in a minute what are the requirements for tracking. But broadly speaking, these can range from any anything from a bookmark to a tweet to a news mention. So it's, it's, a, it's a broad universe, uh, which Altmetric covers a great deal of, um, but in a very specific way. So these are the sources um, that all metric tracks um, and where we capture attention. We assign them all a different color in our lovely donut uh, and we produce a score which is a weighted sum of the attention to the article. Obviously we do not count one tweet as uh, we don't weight it as heavily sorry as we might uh, a news story in the New York Times for instance. Um, the most recent addition to this list is patents. Uh, you might also be curious to know outside and even inside a communications perspective uh, about policy document citations, which are a really powerful um, indicator of impact. So that's a brief overview of what we capture, and this is what we track. So in order for us to track attention to something, we need to be able to track, uh, it has to have an online presence. So it has to be a digital product. It has to have a persistent identifier. Uh, such as a DOI, but including URLs, ISBNs, PubMed IDs, et cetera. And then it has to be in one of the sources that we track. So these are the, uh, the basic requirements for uh, tracking an altmetric. Our industry base is global. It's uh, multi-industry, so we not only have uh, institutions, we have funders and we have publishers as well and including private companies. So there's a broad range of people using this data already. You may be familiar with the donut uh, and the attention score from seeing it either on a details page such as this or most likely on a journal page or in an institutional repository, a website. Um, we're even seeing them increasingly now on online CVs. So essentially Altmetric is a data science company and what we do is we collect and curate data. And today we're gonna to talk about how you can uh, mine this data to enhance your communication strategies. So the volume of data, and this is as of two days ago, um, and some of our sources, as you can tell, is, is fairly large. So you're looking at a very large data set with which to, to make your inquiries. And then this is kind of a sample flow of attention to research online. So something is published, uh, then it may be tweeted by a researcher, might be blogged about, um, and then there is even downstream engagement further to that. So after the initial dissemination, there might be discussion, patients may comment on it, clinicians, et cetera, like that. Reddit, um, obviously, when we need negative feedback, and I'm being slightly sarcastic. 
So the first thing we want to do is kind of get a picture of the landscape. Who's paying attention to your research and what angle is most relevant to your top priorities? So you want to look via a relevant lens here. Do we want to talk about or look at who's talking about your research the most, which sources, which people? Do you want to know when, what just happened, what's been mentioned in the last week or so? Or do you want to know where this is happening? And I'll get in a little later to, to the multiple ways that you can get at this information. But just to, to know that when we look at this information, this presentation, you can be looking at this for any set of research outputs. So you could be looking at this on an organizational level, a department level, or an individual level. One of the most interesting things to me about Allmetric is that you can look at attention over time. So you can get a very good snapshot of what's being said, what the attention uh, is to this particular set of outputs, and you can adjust this time period as you see fit. And again, you can see the colors, codes on the timeline uh, correspond to the colors in the donut. So when you see a lot of light blue, that's Twitter. And for our purposes today, we're going to focus a little bit more on the red, which is news. And one of the interesting things about looking at the data this way is that you can see peaks in attention. So I'm curious now, and I want to know, why was there such a peak of attention on July 16th? So if I click through an metric, now I can zoom in. So now I'm looking at news stories just on that date that pertain to my outputs. And what I want to do now is figure out what caused that what caused that peak? Was there one article in particular? So the easiest way for me to do this is just to scroll down and look for commonalities. So I'm starting to see a lot of things about people being scared of math. <laughs> so this is where I think this peak uh, originated. This is obviously a syndicated um, art coverage, and it's mostly in um, public broadcasting. So now I want to drill down even further. So we've identified the peak, we've identified the article because Altmetric told us that it's citing um, that belongs to our set of research. So now I'm just going into the details page for that article and I'm looking again at these uh, news stories and I can confirm, yes, there were 68 stories from 63 outlets. And again, you can see most of these are public radio. So before I go shout off the mountaintop that, hey, we got coverage and um, all kinds of public radio, as we all know, um, all news is not good news. So we wanna be able to drill down and figure out the context of this coverage. So I can click right into the, um, the main NPR story, and then I am looking through this for references to my research. And in the red box below, you'll see this link. And this is a perfect example of how specific Altmetric gets when it comes to picking up mentions of research. Uh, traditional media monitoring services tend to not pick this up because they're keyword based. So this is, again, something that would supplement media monitoring. It wouldn't replace, for example, a um, service such as Meltwater is going to pick up mentions of your institution. Let's say that your institution received a large grant and you issued a press release and there was a news story. Altmetric will not pick that up because it is not related to a specific research output, but melt, what meltwater might, excuse me. Um, but in this case that you see before you, this is very unlikely to be picked up by traditional media monitoring. So now that we have the context, just to be completely transparent, I click through to that link. Oops. And indeed, it does go to this uh, article that we thought it went to. So that's one way to pinpoint uh, peaks in attention and give them a signal boost or report on them to your um, internal external stakeholders. Uh, now I'd like to talk a little bit about amplification, which is something obviously very important to communications. Um, so there are different parts to this process. Obviously, you have existing relationships with journalists. You have kind of target outlets. It might not be news outlets. They might be blogs. They might be very popular uh, Twitter accounts that you want to target. And Altmetric can help you isolate these audiences and figure out who it is that you want to speak to specifically. So again, 
the first thing you might want to look at is which outlets are mentioning your research the most. Um, in this instance, you'll see that the top uh, mentioner is actually a policy source. Um, if you're familiar at all with the conversation, this is a really interesting and cool outlet, which is um, uh, very science-based. It's often authored by the scientists themselves. It's a little bit of a non-traditional media source. So let's say I wanted to examine coverage in the Huffington Post. If I click through on this, now I can scroll through everything that the Huffington Post has covered that relates to my set of research. But let's say I have um, not received any coverage in the LA Times and that's one of my target outlets that I want to uh, look at. So now I, I want to move beyond just looking at the attention to my research, and I want to explore this in the full altmetric database, which is one of, another fantastic feature because this allows you to access data relating to anything that we track, whether it's associated with your institution or not. So this is ideal, obviously, when you're going in for sources that haven't current current haven't covered you to date. Um, so let's just, as an example, use the LA Times. So I want to look for the LA Times in the full database. I'm going to export this tab. And let's say I have um, one of my researchers that has just published something interesting in Alzheimer's. I'm now looking at um, a list of stories from the LA Times, which covered research outputs as tracked by um, Altmetric. And I can see that they've already done some work in Alzheimer's disease this year. Now I can click through to the article via the platform and I can identify the specific reporter. So this enables you to research which reporters you might want to establish relationships with or send press releases to, et cetera, because you can find evidence that they've already covered your work. I mean, sorry, already covered this topic. And then another thing you might want to look at, especially if you're looking internally um, to have discussions about where to promote things, you want to look at who is already mentioning your research. So now I'm back looking at my own set and I want to look just at this year at all the news coverage I've gotten. Again, I'm going to export the results because I'm a bit of a nerd and I like Excel and I love pivot tables. So you can also do this by browsing in the interface, um, which is not as ideal for webinar screenshots. <laughs> so um, Excel it is. So now I'm looking at a list that I've sorted um, by outlet to see who has uh, paid the most attention to my research thus far this year and as I normally do I'm going to pick out the New York Times. Now I'm going to go back into um, the Explorer and at the top you can see as a source I've just picked the New York Times so I just want to see what the New York Times has covered um, and now just for the sake of um, expediency let's say I, I'm interested in um, who's been covering um, cancer for the New York Times. So now I can click through to this article and I can identify the person that was reporting it. So again, as you're building relationships with people and you're, and you're keeping track of who's covering what and who you might want to reach out to, this is a really valuable tool. Um, I'm going to stop right now and just see if anyone has any questions. And again, I appreciate your patience with my uh, navigation of this platform. If you follow me on Twitter, I've threatened practically to crash it. So um, hopefully that won't happen. So I don't see any questions. So I'm going to keep moving on. So another, uh, you know, the world does not revolve increasingly around traditional media. Um, blogs are very relevant, not only for their own content, but because a lot of, um, with a 24-hour news cycle, a lot of news sources are looking to blogs for content ideas. So I did the same thing. Sorry, I should back up one. So I did the same thing. I just selected as a source blog post this time instead of news. Again, I want to look at information that's relatively recent. So I'm looking at this year and I exported uh, the information. So I'm looking at the top 20 uh, blogs that have covered my research. This one caught my eye um, just because it's topically relevant. Uh, journalist resource. So just like I did for the New York Times, I can go back and I can enter journalist resource at the top and see what, the, what they've covered so far. 
and then I can drill down and see who specifically at this blog uh, wrote about this research. So again, this is like a really good resource if you are trying to investigate new contacts, if you're trying to see who's covering what um, in, the, in the increasingly large arena of the internet. Twitter, I took a slightly different angle uh, just because we have more features I wanted to show off. Um, so now I wanna see who on Twitter is talking about my research the most this year. Um, I'm just selecting tweets. And let's say I just want to see who's talking about my research in the United Kingdom. You can pick a country here and apply that filter, um, download the results, and I apologize for the um, blurriness of the screenshot. So this was the article that received the most attention on Twitter. So I'm curious to know who tweeted about it. So I go to the article's details page. And now I can actually I can actually investigate each one of these tweets and see the context um, around them. And here we have someone who's already decided that this topic would make a great um, news piece. So again, now you have another blog name. This is something you can add to your press releases as similar research is being generated, or if you're trying to signal boost um, research on a similar topic that hasn't gotten that much attention that was pro published previously. Um, the other thing you can do with Altmetric, uh, which is really important, um, is track and analyze attention to researchers. So if you have researcher profiles on your page and, and part of um, your strategy is to help boost their presence online uh, via their profiles, you can use Altmetric to enhance those as well beyond just the badges. So this is a set of, uh, I pulled a set of uh, publications for an author via a PubMed query in Altmetric, and now I'm looking at their attention over time. So this is a fairly active person with significant uh, attention online. This is a great snapshot for them to use um, either on their CV, when they're applying for funding, when they're reporting on funding. And I also get a sense of how broad the coverage of this person's research is. So this is fairly broad. And at the top, you'll see their summary information. Again, this is beautiful because it's all captured for you and you can easily um, take it and report it. And I should say, I'm gonna go back again. So I should say that what is surprising in a lot of instances is that researchers um, tend to be very busy with research. That's probably not so surprising but they're not always aware of the extent of the coverage. So especially when you're reporting or applying for funding, this is invaluable information to have. And the best part about it is that you don't have to go scraping everything yourself, which is something I actually did do before we got Altmetric at my um, funding job uh, evaluating grants. So I would spend hours and hours and hours um, compiling news coverage and trying to determine whether it was actually relevant to that grant or not, if it was, it was more about the researcher or work in general. The beauty of Altmetric is that it's specific to the output, so I could tell immediately that this was relevant to what we had funded. And again, this is really great information that you don't have to call yourself. Another um, source that we track, which I mentioned earlier, is policy documents. This is a very significant indicator of impact um, that I would encourage all of your researchers to, to keep, uh, make themselves aware of. Um, this is beautiful for reporting. Again, because Altmetric is auditable, I can click through now if I wanted to, to that um, policy document, read it and see the context for that mention. And if you're pushing news out to profile sites, you can also just get the latest news covering their research. So again, different lenses from which to approach this data and um, expand on it or promote it. So the other thing I wanted to talk briefly about was um, kind of signal boosting things that aren't getting attention that you might want to um, promote more widely. So to do this, I'm again looking at this set of my own random uh, research outputs that I picked, and I'm going to just look at um, articles that have had attention, excuse me, in the past week. 
Now, when I look at all of these, they all have fairly colorful donuts, meaning that they've got a wide a breadth of coverage and different sources. Their scores are all relatively high, but what stuck out to me here was this article, which has a lower score, but it's still been covered in blogs. And it was mentioned this week, even though it was published in 2012. So now I'm curious. And I'm going to go to the blogs tab of this attention page, and I can see that two blogs recently mentioned this research, and they're both very interesting titles. These are not um, kind of niche, highly technical uh, medical studies. These are articles that could be of interest to a wide range of people. So these are the things now I can identify and I can signal boost using my own platform. Um, the other topic that I promised to get into a little bit was kind of evaluating your efforts as a communications department. So you can do this in a number of ways. So one of the things that you can do, again, going back to this timeline, is identify peaks in attention. Um, again, one of my favorite uh, things about Altmetric and figure out what the source of those um, peaks were. So not just which research spurred it, but what, where exactly did these stories come from? So for the first peak in attention, I'm not going to go through all of the steps that you've seen me do before. Um, I click through and I browse through the news coverage and there was a syndicated article with the same title in multiple outlets. So I became curious about that. If I click down, read through the article, I can see this, the source of this story, which was widely syndicated, was Howard Hughes Medical Institute. The second peak in attention, again, syndicated article, multiple outlets, can be sourced back to a Johns Hopkins press release. So this is one way in which you can show, demonstrate, and report on your efficacy as a communications department. The other thing that Altmetric can do is we can track your own content. So this is content that has to live on your site that you control, but it includes anything from press releases to event pages, conferences, um, summits, and then to the extent that you develop your own feature content to, to bring attention to your research, we can track attention to that as well. So that gives you another level of metrics um, and reporting that you can take advantage of. The other thing you can do in Altmetric is kind of do some peer-to-peer -peer, um, comparisons. If anyone from Johns Hopkins or Cleveland Clinic is on the call, I apologize in advance. Um, but I just pulled this information from our uh, sister company, Dimension. So I picked two sets of articles. Uh, they were published in 2017. They had at least one author affiliated with the respective institutions, and they were broadly categorized as uh, clinical sciences. And I wanted to look at the comparative attention and volume over time. So now we're looking at the snapshot. You can see Johns Hopkins has more outputs, um, but Cleveland Clinic is getting a lot of attention as well for their outputs. You can do this another way. Now I've added another um, institution here. Again, using my incredible love of Excel, I have uh, downloaded data um, for each set and compared it. So the percentage of publications in each set, again, this is just 2017, that have mentions in any source we track versus um, the percentage with blog mentions. Likewise for Twitter and obviously news. So if you are reporting internally or just trying to gauge where you are in comparison to other institutions, you can do that as well um, in Altmetric, using Altmetric. Um, going back, again, this is another thing you can highlight um, internally to your stakeholders and externally. This is great also for um, fundraising efforts if you're trying to show how much work you've been doing and how successful it's been. Um, demographic information is, is really key. So we provide in Altmetric several um, different maps like this um, with summary information at the top and you can scroll down and see if I wanted to click on the other 124 countries I could. So we do this for Twitter, Facebook, policy documents again pretty huge uh, in my opinion, and news. So this is uh, just another way with very nice visuals that you can report on um, your efforts and the reach of your research. 
We also have several reporting uh, capabilities in Altmetric. The first one, as you'll see on the right here, is alert me about new mentions to this specific article. So every time there's a new mention, you'll get an email um, alerting you of that. So that's level one. Then level two is within Altmetric with, for any saved search. So this is a search that could be um, within your institution, a department, an author. It could be the entire institution. Um, this is what we did um, at the funding agency I worked at. We sent a weekly email to our communications department so that they could supplement our news feed with news stories from Altmetric. Um, you can also create, and again, you can um, schedule these however you want to get them, daily, weekly, or monthly. And then the other awesome thing we have is it's called a shareable report. So this report has some basic components, and you can see at the top, I've kind of just given it a generic name for now. But this could be for a department. This could be for um, any safe search that you've conducted in Altmetric. You can remove or add any of these components. And then the great part is once you click the make public um, box on the bottom left, you can then copy that URL and you can share it to any with anyone inside or outside of your organization, whether or not they have access to Altmetric. Um, again, just another uh, benefit that saves you some time and it frankly looks pretty nice. So Altmetric has several different solutions that we offer. Um, the Altmetric Explorer platform is what I've done all of this from today. Uh, we do offer an API. I am not that tech savvy, so I have not delved into that uh, for this webinar. Um, we do give programmatic access again to all the Altmetric data. So beyond your institution, you can do benchmarking. You can investigate sources that haven't covered your research to date. Uh, as I mentioned, we can uh, track your press releases, blog entries, uh, conference event pages. We can also work with you on custom visualizations. And because we are under the umbrella of digital science, we have a lot of resources available to us if you're interested in a very specific custom project. And now I know this is, I'm not even at half an hour, so I'm hoping to save you all some time today. But if you do have questions, um, I'd love to hear them and be able to answer them. So I'm going to check chat, and I think there's a little question box as well. Is everyone able to find the question box? I mean, the I'm sorry, the chat box. I'm going to type a message in just in case because I'm slightly paranoid <laughs> having used this platform for the second time. And then if there are no questions, I'll give it another couple of minutes and then um, release you to continue with what will hopefully be a great day. Okay, I don't think we have any questions. If you do come up with questions after this uh, webinar, we will be following up with you, so feel free to get in touch. And thank you for joining us today.